Hello guys, my name is Ronald Griffin for ArtificialAnimation.com and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at creating the Oblivion title text sequence and uh, I just saw this trailer the other day it's a new film with Tom Cruise apparently and um, I looked at the trailer and saw the text and thought well why not recreate this and make it into a tutorial so that's what we're doing and because I'm traveling on uh, Monday. I can't really release the the video on Monday, so I'll be doing it now instead of my usual Monday um, tutorial regime, which by the way, if you're a new viewer, I release tutorials every Monday. And um, So if this is your stuff, then please uh, do subscribe. Anyway, now here's a quick look at what we'll be, well, basically creating um, from scratch. If you want to take a look at the original trailer, you can. It's uh, Oblivion. Just search Oblivion Trailer 3, I think it was. Um, but anyway, here's a look at what we'll be creating. So from that you can see we've got some text, basically a flare and some particles, and a sort of break up in a odd fashion. Um, they're sort of a bit glitchy and just fall apart. So what we've done is we've used Adobe After Effects CS6 um, and in the description you'll find a link to a project file and uh, once you download this and unzip it you should have um, your Oblivion project file and that'll have the actual project inside of it. What's important to note is this won't work with Adobe After Effects CS 5, 4 or 3. Um, the project file is not backward compatible so if you want to be lazy and you want to just you know, take the project file and edit the text then you're going to need After Effects CS 6. We'll also be using two plugins for this, uh, Video Copilot's Optical Flares and Red Giant Trap Code Particular. And these are both very, very, very good plugins. You can use Null Light Factory uh, instead of Optical Flares, but that's just what we've been working with. So moving on to the tutorial. Um, here you can see once you uh, once you open the the downloaded project file, um, you can see we have our our main uh, sort of um, render sequence here, and you can just see I've put some sequence um, text just quickly together, nothing fancy. Um, for the most part, I didn't really bother to um, drastically change the text as they would have in the original. But the Oblivion text is sort of, um, I got that uh, looking as good as I could in the time I had. So, looks pretty good. The The grain is maybe a bit overkill here. Um, but if we take a look at the original example, which uh, let's just scrub through, you can see there's quite a lot of grain. Um, so what we have is some particles, a flare, and some text. So let's, let's create this from scratch. So we'll just scrap this project completely, um, and we'll start from scratch. First thing we're going to do is create a new composition. So composition, new composition. And I'm going to call this uh, Oblivion. And it's going to be 1920 by 800, 24 frames per second. And I'll make it four seconds long. And that's just the Oblivion text. So why am I making it 1920 by 800? Since it's a trailer, um, they're usually rendered in this sort of aspect ratio, which is um, a 2.4 aspect ratio. So this is the 2.4 aspect ratio, and the original trailer was downloaded in that aspect ratio as well. And if I say aspect ratio one more time, which I just did, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get sick of the word. So uh, we're just going to hit OK. And now the first thing we're going to start is by importing our uh, reference footage. So if you go into the file you downloaded it, in footage assets, you'll find two files. The actual grain um, that we'll be using and the reference. So we'll drag the trailer in to our project palette and we'll drag it into this composition. What I'll do is I'll hit the right bracket on my keyboard and that'll bring us to the edge of the clip. And I'm just going to drag it backward till we see the text. So here we have the text, you can see it's falling apart, sort of being sliced, and they did this manually, um, most likely, but we can use uh, Shatter just to make it a bit quicker. So we have our reference footage, and the first thing we're going to do is write up our font, or our text. And the font they used is Topography Pro, so I'd recommend um, going out and downloading that um, to get the best results. but. Once you've got it um, written out, it should look probably something like this. Um, and what we want to do is we also want to stretch it so that it's not so um, compact. The way you do that is you use the tracking option over here. 
we'll just slide that to 1000 which is the maximum um, allowed and then if you still haven't gotten the full width you can use the actual scale property down here which I had to do I had to set this to 105 but remember um, the scale is it does destroy quality so if we scale this uh, you know all the way over there you can see it doesn't doesn't keep the, um, the actual font rasterized so to speak as the tracking does Okay, so we've gotten our text right now, and the first thing I'll be doing is just recreating the simple particles in the background. And like I said, we'll be using trap code particular for that. So I'll go layer, new solid, and we'll call this particular. Hit OK. Drag this below our text, go to effect, trap code, particular. And immediately, um, if we scrub through, we'll see just some very basic particles. And uh, we want to change this. So First of all, I'm just going to trim this composition. I'm going to trim it to about half the, um, the length, so around two seconds. And you can do that by editing the composition, composition, composition settings. And uh, we can just set this to, we'll set it to uh, three for now. Uh, just made it a bit shorter. Okay, so we've got our particles. The first thing we're going to do is go into particular emitter and under the emission extras we'll hit the pre-run to 100 that pre-runs our particles 100 uh, frames we'll set the particles a second to 2 we'll change the emitter type to uh, box and uh, we'll change some values so the emitter size x I'll just make it 1700 uh, size y 1000 my apologies um, and remember depending on how big your composition is you'll you should adjust those x and y values We'll set the velocity down to 30 and if we just twirl down the particle section we can set the life to 20 seconds and now we've just got some slow moving particles okay uh, we'll just switch the audio off for the original clip and uh, if we just lower the opacity, actually if we switch this off for now we can switch the original reference footage off by hitting the little i um, we can sort of work with these particles. Um, what we want to do is we want to just make them a bit smaller and a bit more random. And uh, we don't want them to pop on so violently. You can see here this just sort of pops right in place. Um, so to do this, we're going to go into the particle section. Size random. I'm going to just play with this a bit. I'm going to change the particle type from sphere to cloudlet. And we'll drop the size at 2. So now we have some cloudlets, and we're going to make the color more gray. So just trying to, so and it's another way of lowering the opacity basically. Um, if we switch the reference footage back on, we can see, if we solo this, we can see the particles just need to be dropped a bit more on the color spectrum. So we can make it just a bit darker. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, now we can go ahead and switch it off again. So we've got our particles, they look okay. And uh, what we can do is we can drop the feather to zero. So now we've just got some particles floating around. And um, we're gonna work a bit more on this text now. So if we switch back on the reference footage, we can see um, now, I can't guarantee this is what they did, but to make it a bit more visible over this flare, uh, they have actually either got a fill or some RGB split on there. Something that defines it. Um, you can see it's very fine, but it is it is defined. So we won't be using a drop shadow. We'll just be using an actual fill. So if we go over here and we double click on this, we can set the fill to black. And then if we look now, we've got some actual fill here. And you can adjust the fill. Make sure it's fill over stroke. You can make it bigger, but obviously we want it very small. So one will do. So now we have our text. It has some fill. It's defined. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and start building our flare. And to do that, we're going to go to layer, new, solid. And we'll call this optical flares. And this is what took um, the longest time for me because obviously the whole point of this is to recreate it. And we want it to look as close as possible. So. On this new layer, we're going to go to Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And I'm going to drop it below the text. And we're going to go into Options. 
And um, there was a preset that I found that actually, it was a good preset to start from. Um, you might not have these presets, but it's simple to to build it. If you've got optical flares installed, um, you might need these extra pro presets from Video Copilot to actually have the the preset I'm talking about. But um, here's a preset it's called Sector Golden and it is inside motion graphics so I believe that comes with optical flares by default and um, this is what we'll be adjusting so straight away I'm just going to scroll to the bottom here and I'll get rid of this multi iris I will also get rid of this iris here and this iris here and you can see uh, if you've got full screen on YouTube you can see I know which ones to delete because um, obviously I can either adjust to the brightness or I can see it just in the preview window that that's the piece and we can just get rid of that. So now we've dumbed it down a bit, um, what we can do is we can get rid of this shimmer too. If we hit lens objects, we can add a streak. Uh, we can turn the brightness down on the streak. And then we can go ahead and add some glint. And we can, we need to limit this glint just so it's, you know, just around the center point. So we've got this flare. Um, and it's not looking anything like the original yet, but if we just keep working on it, we delete some irises down here. We don't want that. Mainly the flare is kept at a, a sort of a level, horizontal level, so we don't have this flare going down. That's fine if it's just hidden here. Um, what we need to do now is we need to add a lot more lines. So there are some existing lines here, and that's sort of why I chose this preset. Now if we click on the, if we find the layer, and again, we can adjust the brightness just to make sure we have the, the correct one selected or solo it. Um, and then we go into the stretch, and we can take this first value, sorry, and just stretch it out. And I'm going to do that. I'm also going to change the distance. Uh, I'm going to do that for all of these smaller ones. I'm just going to stretch it out. And uh, that'll get us some sort of lines. And we can even change the, the height of it to make it thin. And just keep getting these stretched out until you've got sort of um, a similar result. This took a while for me. Um, we can add as well, we've got some custom, if we go into the lens objects and show the custom ones, um, we've got some random stripes. Um, you know, you can you can just add on to them. Uh, whoops. And you've got the taper streak. I mean, you, know, you could change this. Actually, we could set the color to global, and you know, you you can get the streaks on there. So let's just hit OK for now and see how that looks. So that I can guarantee that looks really nothing like the original. But we'll just put the position right behind the B. And it's too bright, so we'll turn the brightness down just slightly. And maybe the scale to 110. And then if we grab the middle point here, you can see we can move the elements around, sort of. And uh, yeah, OK, so now if we switch the reference plate back on, um, we need to move this above everything now. Um, we can see so if we switch that on and off. Yeah, it's kind of similar result. I still need to play a bit more around with it. We need more, basically need less um, softness and more defined lines. So let's try to keep that in mind as we head back into the options. I will turn the glow down in the middle. I'll get rid of this multi iris and the streak. And we just need more harsh lines, basically. So, more harsh lines the better. Let's see if we can find some custom elements that will give us that look. I remember I used um, the thin stripe a lot. So if you just grab the thin stripe, you can see gives us a pretty uh, good result. And you can just keep clicking on it and you'll just get more and more. And that one's a really nice defined one. And... Uh, what we can do is just look for some here and just get rid of them. Because we don't want too many of the smaller ones, we just want uh, some nice lines. Let's hit OK and see how that looks. 
And now I'm going to guess we need a bit more on that um, shimmer there behind the B. So we'll go back in the options, um, play it with the glow, turn that up a bit. And the shimmer especially, this was a lot brighter and a lot bigger. Oops, that is the wrong shimmer. There we go, glint, um, we'll turn that up. Alright, now let's take a look at the original. So in the original it, was, uh, it had a lot more area glow and it was more blown out. So when we head back in, we're just going to try and get that looking as good as we can. So the glow pretty much needs to um, be brighter and more blown out. It needs that area brightness. Is it okay? Let's see how that looks. Um, we can go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And we can play with the, sort of, we can crush it out. Which if you notice in the original one, it's um, it doesn't have that much opacity here. It's sort of it's sort of um, bland and crushed out. We need to lower the shimmer or the glint. And you know I could sit here for hours and play around with this. So this is really something you have to do until you get it looking the way you want. So the color is a bit off, so we're just gonna quickly fix that. We can set the color right here, or you can do it inside. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just take this and I'll pick the color right here. If I switch that. And the curves is doing something with their color, so we can go into the red channel. And just adjust it. All right, so it's getting to look pretty close. Um, if I had more time, I would play around with it a bit more. But for the purpose of the tutorial, let's continue. Um, we can't see our particle, so we'll drop it below the particle there. All right, we've got our particles, we've got our flare, we've got our text. That's good for 17 minutes of recording. Now, we're going to continue by um, adding some grain on top of this. So if we go into the project palette, we can grab this asset here that you've downloaded. Uh, it's called Grain Codec Vision. We'll drag it in. Um, we'll start organizing. So right click, make a new folder. And call this Assets. Drag that in there, drag that in there. And we'll right click a new folder and we'll call this Comps. And we'll drag Oblivion in there. So now our asset will drag this out on top of all of our layers. So now we've got some grain. Um, and we'll right click on this in the project palette interpret footage main and we'll set the loop to 50 times and that way we can stretch this out so now i've got some grain in a loop we can change the transfer mode to screen now it's on top of our footage and we'll just hit t for the opacity and bring it down okay so if we look at the original um, we can see that there are some color differences still um, we can tune that later um, but we generally need some more green uh, and less red. So if we go to layer, new adjustment layer, we'll call this CC for color correction. And we'll go ahead and apply effect curves color or color correction curves. Sorry. I haven't had enough sleep, it seems. Um, let's see. So we just want to give it a bit of green. And uh, just a slight bit of red. Actually, we want to take some more red out. And it's looking a bit better on the green situation here. We will just go ahead and again give the optical flares layer a bit of a color enhancement when it comes to the flare here. Okay. Right, now we need to animate the text and um, if we look at the original we can see the lens object is moving slightly so what we'll do is we'll do the text first and we'll worry about the flare if we just make this oblivion um, a reference footage a 3d layer and we hit w on our keyboard for the rotation tool we can s rotate this or snap it to 90 degrees so it's perfectly level and we can hit down here we can hit two views horizontal 
And what we'll do is on the second camera here, we'll make the view top. So make sure it's top. And then, so now we have two cameras. The left one is the original, um, and the right one is ours. And the tilde key on the keyboard, uh, this makes it full screen. And that's a very quick way for us to check without having to switch the layer on and off. I can switch back to one view at any time, and I have my original. So if you switch that on and off, um, the, the actual visibility for the reference layer, you can see the line. But this does not affect the render at all, so it's fine. All right, let's get the text animated. So the Oblivion text right now is pretty, uh, pretty bland. We'll go into the effects and presets, and we'll search for Shatter. We'll drag that onto Oblivion, and we'll set the view from wireframe plus force to rendered. And now you can see, you know, the cyst blows up. First thing we're going to do is get rid of this horrible depth. So under shape, take the extrusion depth to zero. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to make it a lot less powerful. Also, we can take the direction and uh, make that 90 degrees so it's straight. Under force one, we're going to make the strength 0 0.05. And we're going to make, well, the radius, we'll leave that for now. We'll see how that looks. So. Right now it's falling because of the gravity. So I'll go into the physics and we'll set the gravity to zero. Now you can see if we solo this layer just for quick preview sake, you can see that it breaks apart very slowly. And this is, um, hopefully it reminds you of the original. That is the goal. If we bring the two views back, you can see the original is just falling apart here and of course what they've done is they've taken and masked each part each piece which is what I did in the original example um, you saw some pieces moving up and down um, it was just masking parts of each letter and moving it um, on a position uh, keyframe but the shatter works a lot better if um, we're just doing this quickly so I'll go back to one view and um, we can see that looks pretty good. We can change the actual center of this by selecting the shatter uh, effect. Uh, we can sort of just look for a view we like. And that to me looks okay. So now we have our text. It is breaking apart. And we can make this even slower if we wish. Whoops, that didn't make much sense. 0 0.003. Here we go. And it's even slower. You can just see it. But I mean, how many zeros do you want to add, really, is the question. Um, we'll just leave it like that. So now we can unsolo this and unsolo that, and we're back. So this, to me, is looking pretty good. I mean, it's looking very closely original. Um, and at this point, you know, we could put a lot more time into this and make it look 100% exactly like it. But I hope that this is um, a result that you feel is acceptable. If not, um, you know, you can always play around more with the flare. And um, what we'll do is we'll just play a bit more with the colors just to get, you know, we could do a bit better with the colors. It's more green on the left here. And um, so let's just, I feel like we can take a bit away from the blue channel at this point. And I mean, that's looking pretty damn close. Uh, our version is a bit brighter when it comes to the grain, so we can take the grain and take the opacity down a bit. But obviously in the original, um, we had a lot of grain. Uh, of course, working with motion graphics, you don't really want you know that level of grain particularly. Um, it's because they were um, releasing a movie, and uh, that's not what we usually do. We usually... Uh, I'll stick to the lower end budget stuff and uh, we can't really afford to make our stuff uh, look really bad because it's going in a cinema um, so at this point I'd say the grain is okay what you can do is you can make a new adjustment layer uh, go to effect noise um, and grain add grain and you can this is going to be a lot slower but you can change this from preview to final output and you know you can match that exact grain um, if you wanted to. So that's a thing to keep in mind. If you wanted to, you could you know you could have the exact amount of grain. But 
I'm just not gonna bother with that. So at this point we have our oblivion text and we can make um, the flare move from sort of just a left to right position and it'll just add some movement. So if we go back to one view, we will move to the start of the composition and we'll go into the optical flares layer. We'll take and stop watch the center position here at the start and move all the way to the end. And we'll just take this um, first value here and just move it slightly to the right. So let me just go ahead and ramp preview what we have now and we'll just take a look quickly. Okay, and here we are. Uh, it looks to me pretty good. So this is um, pretty much the dust of it. I'm gonna show you just quickly how to put together sort of a sequence. So if we go into the project and the comps, we can control D, very important that we do it in here. So we actually create a true copy. Control D on the keyboard that duplicates it. And we'll just call this uh, presents. We'll open it. Now we have two um, sort of layers here and we can take the text tool and we'll change this to presents. Um, what we can do is just grab the optical flares layer, just move the flare to the middle. And uh, now, you know, we have this sort of different sequence here. And we can, again, duplicate, call this one um, company, open that, and we will, Again, take the text tool, name this company, or whatever you're called. Um, and now what we can do is create a new composition. And if my math is correct, well, screw my math, we'll just make it 10 seconds long. So now we have a 10 seconds long um, new composition, and we'll just drag these three in here. And so we'll just line these up. And so now we have a sequence, you know, company presents oblivion. There you go. It's a masterpiece. Let's call this render. And so there's our sequence. And at this point, you know, you can just render it out and um, do as you wish with it. So again, my name is Ronald Griffin for artificialanimation.com. And uh, this has just been a tutorial to recreate the Oblivion title sequence. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send me a, a message on YouTube, an email, um, or just leave a comment. If you like the content, as always, please do like the video, subscribe, and uh, if you do make something out of this and uh, you feel like showing me, just send me a message. I'd love to see what you come up with. So until next Monday, have a nice week.